Hello, today I've got three videos queued up on entrenching in the Assault Squad 2 editor. I hope you enjoy them. And here's number one. All right, let's take a look at uh, making trenches and foxholes and digging into the ground inside the editor. Um, there are two ways you can do it. You can do it in the editor or you can do it live in the gameplay if you're using the Rob's mod. You can, um, your soldier can grab a shovel off, out of a truck and dig a foxhole uh, live in the gameplay, which is priceless as far as options for playing the game. But if you're designing a map, you want to pre-place and design your map with uh, foxholes, tank trenches and whatnot. This is the way you would do it. So, like I say, we're in F2, which is the uh, it's the map making tab in the editor. So, in F2, you have a tab up here, Entity, and you also have the Land tab. If you go to the Land tab, it's active right now. You can because this map hasn't been saved. Once you save the map, you make your trenches, you make your edits, you save it. Then those edits will get dug out inside the ground, but it's no longer editable. So I'll show you how that works. Um, so you're allowed right now in the map editor, train editor, to dig out trenches. And in the tab here, if you're in entities, you're given all these options under landscape. You can click that. And if you click the cut entities, you show you the different pre-made trenches you can build in your map. Uh, as an example, let's just go out here if you want to make a very large tank ditch which is a huge big ditch you could use their pre-made one here the middle part of it if you click down and then click off and then you want a side or an end part and you would move that into position and space it according to the logs it's, you'll get a hang of it but basically you space it correctly click down and then the other end you have to click down and click off Select it, use your Z key, spin it into position, use your right mouse button and move it into a position that looks logical like it fits. And change your camera view to make sure it's lined up from all sides. That's probably about right. You generally want to space those wood pylons or pieces of wood about the same throughout the entire thing so it's spaced right. But I'll give you a bit of a clue. Then click off. And that will be dug out as soon as we save this scene. But before we do, we'll just plop down a few others just to show you how you can use these pre-made items in the game. So a big land crater, different types of dirt. And I, like I said, they're not dug out yet, but you, you're placing them right now. You're, when we save it, they'll be dug out. So as far as a custom trench, you can do that to you have some ability to create it the way you want. Let's go with a ground uh, trench for soldiers. If I click down once and twice, I can make it longer. I could do it just one piece there. That would be fairly short. But if I space it about right there like that and do another one, I can make a fairly long trench. And you can use corners and different segments and build uh, square trenches even rounds, ends, crosses, different, you know, uh, different shapes of trenches that they have pre-made here. And if you want to add the right end piece, it would be, since that was a 1.5 si uh, size uh, ground trench, I need a 1.5, so if I click on it, it highlights, and it's telling me that's a 1.5 size exit piece, which should work for us here. So click down, click another one for this end, off click, reselect, Z key, which is always a little tricky, and then use your right mouse button to move the wood into position, Z key, and move that into position. And you don't have to be that precise, but over time you get uh, the idea that you space it correctly and there won't be any white spaces when it digs itself out. You, you'll get the hang of it easily. And then once you're done with the pre-made trenches and ditches in the game, you simply go to F, uh, you would save it now. So 
what you're doing is you're, you're telling the map part of the editor, F2, that you want to save these new edits where you've placed this down. So I go up here and I go save as, and I give it some just quick name for testing here as uh, I'll, I'll say 12. Click OK. It saves it into its memory. And now if I turn off the fog of war, they're still not dug out. But that's fine. You have to do one more step to make sure this is done right. Go to F3 and give it a mission file. So now in F3, I go and do a save in F3 and save as, oh, let's just call it, uh, we'll call it 12 for the same mission. All right. So now I go back to F2 and I do a reload and it should be cut out. So when this reloads, those entities should be cut out as they are here. Turn the fog of war off, and that's how they're cut out. Now, the problem is, and you'll see that up here now, the land tab, I can no longer click it, and I can't edit my land. I can't select these and delete them and start over. I can't change their size. They're done. They're baked in. So you do have the ability to make some custom trenches in the game. And these look you know, good and can be used in a lot of different ways but they're pre-baked, they're not editable later, you can't edit them, and they have limitations. So what we want to do here today, and we'll just leave those for now, we want to get back to an editable land tab here. So what I want to do is, after showing you that, I want to just go up here and load my starter mission here, YouTube Entrenchment Tutorial. And now, uh, Alt F to get rid of the uh, fog of war. All right, so now those trenches are gone and we have a clean scene with the props I need to make custom entrenchments. The tools are available. I see I have my land tab now available to edit and dig into the ground and we're all set to actually do custom digging into the ground. So what you want to do is your brush size, so now that we're in the uh, land portion, editing of the land, I'm on the Heights tab, and there are different tabs to give you, you can change the colors of the terrain, the textures, the add grass, and the heights. Right now, we want to dig, which is under the height tab. The brush size is way too big, um, but if you want to just, you know, create uh, a hill to start with and that's what I did for a demonstration a kind of a flat top hill you use this and you can change the size of your brush by going plus hold down the plus on your numeric keypad you have the plus and minus keys and that's how you make your brush size for editing ground bigger and smaller plus and minus if you hold it down it moves it really quick so if you want to make a big hill you can just go like that and now you see you have a hill that's built. And hit Control Z to get rid of that. I want to make my brush size small again. So the negative key on the keypad. And you can make very small brushes if you want. So the trick here is we want to make a custom entrenchment for a large tank. On the side of this little hill or berm here, we want to be out looking up over maybe it's a coastal line or some maybe there's a defending a small town in the background something of that sort but we want to make a custom trench that looks great functions well and gives a real extra bit of gloss to our fancy little map making skills here so all these props are something that I've taken off of my from my master starter map which I talk about in another video which instead of looking through all the menus trying to find stuff you want and you can never find them again and there's there's because there's literally thousands of pieces in the game you make one starter map and then you can find them easily grab them and copy and paste them into whatever uh, map you're currently making so I I just went through my starter map and I said what would be great for making a really cool custom entrenched tank scene and I grabbed these, copied them, and pasted them to this scene, and I saved it. 
Now we're ready to go. We won't be spending half the day searching in through the menus to find this stuff. All right, so since we have a live land tab still, we want to make our brush about the size that will be able to give us what we want. And in this next video, which I'll take a break here, in the next segment, I'm simply going to tell you how your brush works in digging out the dirt, how to control your sizes and control the sharpness of your digging. So we'll do that next. All right, so when you're digging in the editor, you want to control your scoops, your shovel, so to speak. And the first thing you need to know is if you've tried this before, you've probably had bad results because it gives you, um, you're not getting uh, well-defined trenches when you build them. The reason is this. If you go to polygons, and if we look, and I uh, make the brush smaller here, and if we turn on wireframe, we see that the mesh by default is huge. Um, the polygons are very big. And when you dig into them, it creates very big, wonky, clumsy trenches because the polygons are big and it doesn't give you the fine detail we need. So if we're going to build a very nice, finely defined or a very a precisely defined trench in this hill here. We need to make these polygons a lot smaller so we can control that. So switch it from zero to all the way to five. Take your brush and you don't want to overdo it. You just want to, wherever you're going to need extra polygons for this precise trench, you want to just left click once and it, the computer will take a while as it updates and now this entire hill should be very have very fine polygons and if we go back to heights now when we build and it doesn't always show you if you go back to polygons it doesn't always exactly show you where those smaller polygons are but you simply want to paint down more defined smaller polygons so you can make a more interesting trench. That's about all there's needed there. So that's in the polygon tab. <clears throat> so now we have more resolution for our trench. We can start to dig properly. The other main thing to understand about digging is that we need control over the depth of the shovel. How often have you just, you know, started painting and you get these big clumps and it's you know not what you want so we control Z that we want to control how high our shovel digs or how low it digs and you do that with using your height map which we can turn on here it gives us a little bit of help visually but we want to control the fixed height so if I used fixed height down here this is a fixed height of zero so right now I turn on fixed height. If I use my map or my brush here, I'm getting nothing because it's a fixed height of zero, the default. If I switch the fixed height to plus 10, so if we go 10, return, now my brush will instantly pop it up to a height of 10, which if I move the camera, you can see that is a defined height of 10. It won't go any higher. And everywhere I paint, it will be a height of 10. Now, we want to know that because that's very useful. Because when you're digging, sometimes you want to have slopes. Sometimes you want to have a very defined height. Sometimes you want to have a defined uh, low point. And this gives us that definition or that control. So... Let's say that the trench is going to be the size of this tank, and you can plop down a demonstration F2 tank uh, in your scene. You don't have to go to F3 and save it to, to bring an entity in from F3. If I go to entities in F2, you can bring in elements that aren't playable, so to speak. They're not live elements, but they're used as map elements, and that's where I got this tank. 
and uh, even though it's not going to be used in the game it's going to give me the right size for my trench so I can make the appropriate uh, appropriate cuts into this dirt so that's why I put down the F2 tank so now if we go back to the the heights tab I see my brush size using the plus and minus keys on your, your numeric keypad I can make it smaller or bigger and I choose to make it about the size of the tank so we'll start with that now if we know we have a fixed height of let's start with zero and we know that uh, so we're back at zero here so we know that when I brush down now it's gonna not do anything because it's at zero and zero is your base number to start with and if I brush over this this amount of 10 plus 10 it will dig into it an amount of 10 just like it did there so we know that brush is set for if I was to dig right now and if it was set to super fast digging super sharp digging and when I brush down and hit the left mouse key it's going to dig right in so it's going to go right to the bottom the base height of the map which is quite low so that's exactly what it did and that's exactly what we don't want but that's that's how I know it's set at a fixed height of zero let's control Z that and now that we know how this all works we can control exactly what I want which is to cut about half the height of the tank into this hill to start with and I want it fairly flat so if my base amount uh, was 10 and I know I just cut down about it looks like this hill if that's 10 this hill must be about what 200 the top of it close to 200 I'm guessing so let's set our fixed amount or our relative to the top here so whenever you're using relative it's relative to where your brush is now so if I want to take 10 height points off of this relatively high hill I would hit fixed to relative and I would go minus say I'm gonna go minus 20 so if I go negative 20 hit return my brush is now set for a fixed height of minus 20 control to minus 20 but it's relative to the top of the hill so which means it should dig out about a flat amount and I'm using the fast sharp brush it should give me a trench about minus 20 from the top of the hill not the, the ground plane down here so let's try that and that's exactly what we get so now I just built myself a trench it was too big but you get the exact idea of what I'm saying here so if I drive that tank down into there I want just the top of the tank the turret to be able to turn and rotate without clipping much of the ground or I could dig it deeper and have the turret not be able to turn very much but it's going to be have a lot of side protection so let's just now that we understand how to control the brush let's undo that and I determined that I want it even lower than that so and I want my brush smaller so I use the negative key make my brush a little smaller I'm going to negative 25 so negative 26 let's say return now my brush is smaller and it should be digging down a little bit more than before and I want the uh, front the tip of the uh, the tanks uh, barrel to be able to project outside of the hill so let's go about like that and all right and it doesn't have to be perfectly square I, I every time you hit your brush down it's going to go another minus 26 so if I hit my brush down again it's another negative 26 relative so that's how it works so when I made this uh, dig out here I didn't hit I didn't repeatedly hit my mouse key I just hit it once held it down and dragged so let's just make sure you understand how this works 
So I want to take minus 26 from the relative top of this hill. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and drag. I'm not clicking it several times. I'm just holding it down once and dragging. And I get my 1, negative 12, or negative 26. And that's exactly what I wanted. And the front is a little bit taken out. So when I drive my tank in here, we have the beginnings of the digging out of what will be a great uh, trench for this size tank. So now, how do we drive, be able to drive the tank in and out of this trench? Well, we have to do that in steps now. So since we can control our height really well, let's, um, let's continue to take this negative 26 right to the back of the trench. And we can go like that. So the tank can actually drive in there. But we're going to smooth this all out. That's not an issue. That's not a problem. Let's just go like this. And it's getting a little bit deep. But as you see in this, just I'm going to switch this to minus 10 negative 10 so we're getting less of a cut and gonna just dig a little bit out here so the tank the tank can drive in and out of this arrangement of this trench from the other side of the hill now you're saying oh that looks that looks like garbage that's way well this is how we fix it now we set we turn off fixed relative and um, we go back to zero <clears throat> And if we hold down the shift key, make the brush a little bit larger. If I hold down the shift key, it'll start smoothing everything out. Everything's going to get nice and smooth where I want it to be smooth. And it's going to actually ramp up to the top there a little better so the tank can make the brush a little smaller. And now we're getting some nice smoothness that in the game the tank could actually drive up here. And we're going to, instead of going down, we're going to go up a little bit. Oops, sorry. We're going to hit that smoothing key a little bit more here. So with the shift button down, it smooths everything out nicely. All right. That's exactly what we want. Now, when you're digging, you're actually digging with shovels. Some of the ground would be and piles up beside where they dug out. So now we want to actually dig up a little ways. So we want to take out, turn off fixed height completely, and we want to turn this brush back to a somewhat slow and not so sharp and start making piles of dirt with a smaller brush. So <clears throat> they would be shoveling dirt up here. And if you see, I just added a bunch of dirt up there like they would have if they were shoveling it out. If there are a bunch of soldiers shoveling this out. Now again, this can be all smoothed out, but that's how it would be done. They would dig out and they'd have to put the dirt somewhere and they would make it extra protection along the bank here as they dug out. And as you see there, you can see a bunch of dirt as they pull it out here. And now shift key. I can smooth out that one that was too high. You can smooth this out. But you don't want to smooth too much because you want some of this resolution that you work so hard to get. So that's a pretty deep uh, tank or uh, trench. But if I take now, if I go to Entities tab, click on this and right mouse button, move it into position, I see that I'm going to have a lot of side protection, a lot of rear protection there relative to the battlefield. And I can decide now if I want to make it deeper or not. If I want to go even two feet deeper, I can. Now is the time to do it. And I think I will. I'll take it another four feet down relative. So. And you need a little extra space on each side of the tank for the sandbags and the reinforcements that you're going to build up there. So let's just move this tank prop out of the way. Let's go back to 
this tab. Now we just decided that we want to dig it a little bit deeper. Now we're going to control it again. The brush size is going to be made the appropriate size about there. Now we want it fixed of we want to just go another say negative four negative four relative feet and we want it fixed relative to where we're at now the height that we are now and uh, so if I click it should take me about four feet lower and that's exactly what we got here it's a little bit hard to see it but that's exactly what we did so if you look maybe not four feet as we know it but four game units lower and actually I'm going to take it to negative if I want to change that I'm going to change that to negative six return and there we get it even a little bit lower and I think I'm good with that now shift key means I can smooth out that transition of the digging out the back way and as far as dirt around it I'm going to turn off fixed and relative and just dig a little bit I guess relative stays on when it's at that setting if I take it back to zero just so that I remember to turn that back to zero and turn that off so just a little bit more dirt shoveled up from the ditch that's looking pretty good I like the and now you see we're actually getting some resolution here to give us sharpness of digging and the mounds of dirt because we added the extra resolution into the base mesh if you remember from the polygons and that's why we're able to do this so that's looking good um, go to the entity tab move the tank back in there and it'll be moved right up there it can still rotate its turret but we're getting really good protection from the sides and in the front we're going to put some sandbags and we're actually getting exactly what we want in the game right now so let's go back out in, so let's stay into the entities tab we're done with our digging right now and you can save right now um, because the digging part should be done or if you want to make adjustments later then don't save out right now but now it's time for some props so let's take this out and let's first bring the sandbags that are going to be on alongside because when soldiers make a really nice uh, entrenchment like this they usually enforce it with sandbags and whatnot so we can just go copy that and control paste control V and we can start putting in our sandbags and we go another control V and if we lift it up with the A key that'll lift it up and we'll go with the A key down since there's two and one you start to build up the sides of the sandbags and if you do it one at a time it's easier so let's just get that into position with the A key we move it down and you don't want these perfectly aligned they're going to be dropped in here by soldiers so it's not necessarily going to be just perfectly done but you want to move your sandbags into a position where they're starting to make sense and you may rotate it use the X key to rotate it a little bit you have all the keys you need the Z and the X keys to get your sandbags looking good and then when that's all done we can actually smooth that off just a little bit so I would spend time getting my sandbags just in a nice position go all the way around I would put some in front I would grab some like this maybe even with some of the grass so do a copy control C and then paste it over here control V 
zoom in a little bit. Okay, so use the A key to move it up. Get it into a position that makes sense and you want to spin things around and take your time. You want to rotate it. Now move the grass in a position that makes sense. And you can copy that and paste some more grass over here. And you want to break up all those hard angles and edges into something that makes visually sense. Now this grass can burn. It, it becomes part of the scene. And again, you want to test with your prop and make sure that the turret has space to move, that the tracks are on the ground. And you can begin to see that our entrenchment is looking, beginning to look quite good. I, I think at this point I would go back to my heights tab, I would make the brush a little bit smaller. Use the smooth key with a slow pace and a soft touch. So, and just using the shift key, smooth out these really hard edges here. Now that we got it looking just the way we want, we can smooth exactly how we want. If we want to smooth really fast, we could go to sharp and fast brush. But when you're doing the fine details like this, so you can see it's just making a slight. And we want to keep the definition we so hard work to get. We don't want to smooth that all the way into a bunch of mush. But we want to keep some definition, take the hard edge off. So a little bit on that dirt pile, not too much. And that's looking good. A little bit in the front. And when you smooth things, it, it uh, often makes things set in a little better. Even the sandbags will set just slightly better. And, and so there, that's uh, basically what I would do for this entrenched tank. And the rest, uh, if we go back to the props tab or the entities tab, is all about moving. Now, one thing I could do, I could take my prop out here back in the entities tab. I take my prop out. The sandbags, I can move them a little bit further in, the A key and down. You want to make it look realistic and function properly. And I would spend time with the, you know, the sandbags, like I've been saying. But one thing I, you might do because the ground is often um, muddy. So control C, control copy. I would go control paste them and rotate. Now the size key is the S key. If I size this up, you don't see it sizing. You see the outer ring moving. You don't see it getting any bigger. Well, it will as soon as I move it. And boom, they'll. That's how you can resize things even when you think they're not actually doing it in the editor. They are. You just have to move it and it resizes. And then I can use the A key to move them up or down. So move them around. Take those logs. Now this is something they would probably do if, if it was muddy terrain. They would use the logs to keep the tank from sliding in the ground. So you can just visually give a clue. And it breaks up the dirt and the ground and makes it all the more exciting to look at. And once you get it somewhat natural, maybe tilt that up a little bit. It's going to take a while to get it as you like it. A key with the left mouse button. That's looking pretty good. So now, visually, your tank makes more sense. It's on logs, which means they've actually taken the time to prepare. This may be an entrenchment that is set up for you know a long period of time. 
through the mud, through the rain, and maybe just tilt that a little bit like that. And brown. And I might even just copy that and paste another one. And might even resize this a little bit smaller. Tilt it. Eh, somewhere like that. There. That's pretty close to what I'm looking for visually. So that makes, not only does it visually enhance the game, those logs may or may not catch on fire. They may, when there's explosions in the game, all these um, sand uh, bags will go flying. Uh, they're all modeled in the game. The grass may catch on fire. These logs will break up or they possibly catch on fire. So every time you add something to your scene, you're adding a bunch of gameplay elements. So if we copy and paste this, these barrels, because the uh, tank needs to refuel, and we paste that over there, which makes sense. These barrels may catch on fire, they'll blow up, they'll go flying. More props. Uh, the tank needs to have a bunch of, um, you know, the machine guns need to have uh, rounds. And so there's boxes of ammunition available, no doubt. And you want to place those in a way that makes sense on a bit of a hill there. Those will catch on fire or something. Will, the, the boxes will break up. And we'll do the same with this. We'll put some on this side. Maybe back down here, they're going to have some of these. And again, we want to tilt it to the ground to make sense. And you just continue to do this with extra items um, as they make sense in the scene because the sandbags are going to be thrown all over and you can, you can change the color of them, you can change their angles, the size, everything about these props can be changed and you want them to fit on the ground and make sense and they'll be, become part of the gameplay. Another thing I wanted to show is how you can take this element, a stamp. Now this one is a one that has a bit of an angle to it, but you could use some straighter ones. And you want it to go in this entrance in a way that makes sense. And if I was doing, taking my time, I would add straighter ones up in here. And I'll show you. And in the end of this video, the next video, I will show how I finished off this scene, how I changed the lighting, added some uh, barrels of lit, or they may have a campfire or a barrel that's lit for heat, heating up the soldiers. You add soldiers sitting around, talking, smoking, and you end up with a scene that um, is a lot better than you could imagine. Now, they even may take items for anti-aircraft protected from aircraft. Um, you can imagine you could use all kinds of props in this situation. You could go like this, cover it halfway, which you can still see it for gameplay reasons. The commander can still pop outside of the hatch. You can, you want to make it tall enough so the commander can get out. And so once this is all in the game, you can see how much fun it would be. Now, of course, you're going to add rocks and uh, debris to make it look like it's actually uh, dirt that they were digging. And this is something that's well worth the time to do. And you want to make sure they're stuck in the ground, the appropriate distance. And the whole thing about dirt and ground is having the rocks that bring that illusion that it's not just a texture but it's uh, it's done in a way that makes sense visually. So let's bring it up a little bit. Uh, 
and once you get it close you can just copy that so select that co copy that paste it and you can easily paste it again and you have even more I would rotate this one and as you take these elements make sure they're in the ground or on the ground and you can you don't want to waste too much rock but you want to make sure that you're giving the, visually the eye the impression that they there are really rocks here and sometimes you have to hand place the odd one copy that paste that so I would do I would take some of my rocks spend time making that dirt look like it is actually dirt I'd copy some of these I would paste some of those over here and uh, depending on how much you have to play with in your scene you don't want to spend too much of your polygons on just rocks but you want to make it look believable and interesting like they actually dug up that dirt and then once you have that looking good you want to add grass a few trees rotate things around that looks a little too contrived there so rocks are going to be dense and sparse depending and then you add grasses copy paste so you want to add some grass It's all about the artistic work of making your scene look interesting. So when I return, I will have finished this scene, relit it, put in a real tank with soldiers, and you'll see the final product. All right, so here we see the product as it stands today, the, uh, the entrenchment here. It's uh, functional. If I click on it, so I'll go to our side, click on it, um, turn on the engine, take direct control. You can see that we can turn the turret quite a distance. We can uh, fire. We can change machine gun. So we really have great functionality, but we also have a safe emplacement for the tank. Uh, visually it looks good. And um, the cost of polygon is not too high. It's doable with a modern computer. And this would be one of your featured tank emplacements. If I, uh, turn off the engine there, which is quite loud, but you can see it's functional. It looks good on the map. You can actually back the tank out facing forward, so you can safely ba back the tank out if, uh, it would just run over some of the supplies here, but that's not an issue. Um, let's try that. So if we take the tank and if we do it the way we're supposed to, turn on the engine. As soon as the uh, engine's on and we get the move tool. And if we shift it, it won't reverse or it won't rotate. It'll reverse safely out and follow that path. quite functional, looks good, and uh, you could re replace it with a different tank and whatnot. It's, uh, the main things to remember is that to change the mesh, to make it a higher resolution mesh so that you have a very precise way of carving into the ground, make it look presentable and functional. And uh, like I had said earlier, if uh, have them shut the engine off again. All right, so 
I also said earlier that you can have the uh, soldiers go to an engineering truck if you have the uh, Rob's mod. They can just grab a shovel and they can dig a live trench in, in while the game is playing if you, uh, you put some shovels in, some engineering shovels, and uh, or sandbags depending. And they will use that shovel. If you double click on it, activate the shovel, go to your extras here, you'll have all these options to dig. So if we dig a, a deep foxhole, let's uh, shallow foxhole, shallow foxhole, and a deep foxhole. Well, we'll click deep foxhole. Now with the uh, right mouse button, if I click and drag, I get a directional pointer here. I can have them create the foxhole in a certain direction. Let's go straight forward, out forward. And he'll start digging and he'll uh, build the foxhole. And while he's doing that, let's just, um, let's change some of the lighting to give you an idea of what you can do with lighting in the game. So here, an atmosphere is very important. A little bit lighter out, that was quite dark. Uh, we can switch to a rainy night. Back to night. And this would be a full moon night. So, atmosphere is a lot in the game. The lighting, very important. And uh, we'll be doing a video on that. Uh, CGI looks a lot better if you can uh, dull. There's certain shadows and lighting that works best. Of course, you want to be able to see what you're doing, but still have good shadows and definition and color. So this is more of a sunset scene with still nice, rich lighting. So he's almost done his little uh, trench here now. So. That's uh, my video on entrenchment. You can do it in the editor. You can hand create it in the editor with precise digging. So you can customize, make your own. You can use the presets that are in the editor. Just remember you have to uh, copy and save and paste both the F2 file and the F3 file to make sure that that works properly. So now if I grab this guy And have a move. He'll get a move marker to go in that foxhole just like that. The ghost shows exactly how he's going to take that position. And I got to turn his rifle on because he was standing without the rifle before. And you can see that he's entrenched beautifully right in there. And that will protect him greatly from gunfire. He's going to last, you know, five times longer than he would if he was just standing out in the open. And the, th the same thing applies with your tanks, of course. Um, turn the engine on. We'll have a move back here one more time. Engine's on and move cursor appears. So using trenching, it adds a lot to the game. Um, your tank will last five times longer and the gameplay will be a lot more interesting for your maps and your videos. That's it for today's video.